Hello, good day, and welcome to the Point 99 podcast with your host, that's me, Mr. Steve. It's still season five, but we're on to episode number six. We're breaking new ground for the show today as we venture into the murky waters of in person interviewing. So I had a blast interviewing this week's guest earlier in the week, but I placed my microphone in slightly the wrong place, so my audio is a little bit ropey, while hers is bang on the money. Why she'd want to work with an amateur such as myself, I do not know, but hey, we still had a fantastic chat, so fingers crossed you all enjoy it. Shower her with praise, follows, do all the nice stuff, but we'll get to that when we get to that portion of the show. With guests on the tip of my tongue, though, what a reception we had to last week's guest, A.B. McCracken, and rightfully so. He's been a little bit blown away by the feedback, but it came as no surprise to anyone like myself or the Edinburgh runner, Jace Woods, as we knew that he would go down a treat. A.B.'s such a friendly, humble, top bloke who's punting out amazing performances but he is that quintessential everyday runner who's just having a great time doing what he loves doing. If you have no idea who or what I'm talking about though, or what the podcast even is, the Point 99 podcast is a running podcast for all runners of all abilities, but especially the everyday runners out there like you and I. Although admittedly, the name doesn't instantly give that away unless you're a right Strava nerd like myself. The purpose of the 99 is to try and help you guys along whatever path your journey is taking. That might be through relatable guests like we had with AB and with this week's guest, with their unique and awesome stories, shared experiences and lessons that we all inevitably learn during our own journeys, but hopefully we can share those to help you avoid making any mistakes yourself. The 99's biggest goal is and has always been to demonstrate that we are all more alike than we sometimes think and that through shared conversation we can improve as runners and hopefully as all-round individuals as a whole as well. The previous week, or at least since the last episode, has seen the close of our big giveaway that we managed to pull together incorporating prizes with our friends from Twisted Running, Kylo in the Wild, Vim Nutrition, ourselves, and of course, the always amazing and super lovely Loch Ness 24. For impartiality purposes, I didn't press the big button on the random selection generator myself. That fell to this week's guest and we had a video proving that it was all fair and all impartial on that side of things on the stories earlier in the week. I'm not going to lie, it was super time consuming checking that all the criteria had been met to make sure that everyone got the correct number of entries that they were eligible for, but that was totally on me. At the end of the day though, I wanted to show the love to the epic companies who had chipped in to help me pull together such an amazing prize package. So making sure everyone had given them the deserved follows or you know, likes, etc. That was the least that I could do. Anyway, the winner was the lovely Ultra Linny. As many of our regular listeners will have seen me post about a few times this week. I've already reached out to Lynn and the companies, so hopefully everything will start making its way to her very soon, as well as a brand new pair of trail shoes, which I will get sorted and sent to her, which she 100% plans to use at the 24. So I'm looking forward to meeting her in person, cheering her on and supporting her in any way that I can in between my own laps, of course. I do also want to give a little bit of a shout out to those big flip floppers who have followed and unfollowed us time and time again, especially though during the giveaways. I know that you can't keep 100% of your audience, but there are just a few names out there that I have a knack at remembering and it's a bit weak sauce to immediately unfollow us because you didn't win. Then again, I know who the legends truly are it's all you guys and girls that listen weekly and not those chumps who are spitting the dummy because they didn't win. Otherwise, what else has been happening this past week? Well, for me, it's been intermittent sessions after some very long and stressful days in the office, but I've been pulling out some tough slogs in hailstones one minute and rain the next, 
but then when you think that you're done, it's scorching heat in the next breath. I mean, it's typical Highland weather at this time of year. With the 24 being my next big event on the calendar, though, consistency is key, getting stronger and keeping the head. So come rain or shine, it's about getting out and getting these sessions done. I have changed the supplements that I'm using, uh, readying myself for the 24 and the process I'm hoping to achieve on the road to the event. So far, everything feels like it's working. So fingers crossed, I'm ticking all the right boxes and come race day, myself and Lorna can smash out an amazing team effort together. I might go over some of the supplements I'm now using in a later episode like we did in the past. But yeah, as I say, so far, so good. Let's hope that continues. Community wise, the feedback to this week's question has once again been a little bit underwhelming. So I think it's time that I call a day on putting the question up. I know it doesn't really do any harm to put it up, but it's just a little bit disheartening when you don't really get too many entries into the question box. I do like spotlighting my own observations from my feed though. So we'll probably just go back to that and make sure that we're trying to put a bit of variety, shout different people out each week and just show our praise and admiration for what you are all doing in your own little journeys. I do, however, know that Jimmy Bunter will always make the time to slide into my DMs and whisper sweet shout out nothings into my ear, as was the case once again this week as he keeps his crown as the king of shouting out appreciation and love to the community as he shouted out not only the Edinburgh Stunner, AB, once again for his PB, but also Davy Roberts for smashing the Glen Lyon Ultra. It's Leon Lyon. I'm not quite sure in the pronunciation. Davey's one of those guys I'd love to get on as a guest at some point, not only because he's like a well-oiled machine with how consistent he is with his own running. He's knocked out some scary distance already this year through run days and double run days, etc. and ultras as well. But he's just a top guy I selfishly want to chat to. As, however, is Jimmy, who funnily enough is the last member of the Insta Runners Roundup podcast I need to get on to complete my collection. If you haven't heard the guys on the podcast yet, head over to the Insta Runners Roundup podcast. Once you're done with this episode, give them a follow, listen to the first three episodes they've had out. It is a little bit chaotic at times, but it's chaotic in a great way. And it's so nice to hear such a variation of views on different things within the running community, events, etc. You're not just getting one side of a story. You're getting five different sides, but they work so well together. So yeah, hop on over, give them a follow and just hear what they're all about. We once again welcome the beautiful TJ I run for shirts and medals though as she shouts herself out for finally getting back out running after surgery. You love to see it TJ. You've been having a rough old draw of it of late uh, but you've never stopped smiling. I'm loving the news that you're back out again and can't wait to see what you're going to smash next. So fingers crossed everything's all well all good and that continues for the foreseeable future. Staying stateside and we have another of our pals, Ant Runs on Plants or Ants Run on Plants, sorry. He's shouting himself out as well for the second time running a 10 miler recently. He's getting back to his pre-injury fitness and like with TJ, I love to see it. I'm blessed to have the ability to connect with these lovely people and love seeing their Strava successes and posts. Keep up the hard work, Ant. And I'm, again, going to follow your journey and shout you on from this side of the pond. So fingers crossed. It's all plain sailing and good fitness from now on. Finally, we have our sheep shitting pal in Saudi, or at least he's been stateside this past week. Doug runs Saudi. Doug's asking if buying a new pair of Nikes counts as a win. Well, that's a silly question, Doug. You know where my current brand loyalties lie. So of course, that's a mega win. And they're in the best color too, if it's the ones you had up in your post the other day. 
I also have to shout out three people I realised I missed last week after pressing the publish button on the episode and I don't know how I've missed them. So sorry guys, hopefully this makes up for it. A late to the draw shout out to Bob Burrell, the Kilsyth runner, Mike Houston running beyond limits and the lovely Pauline McFarlane, Pauline, a mum that runs, for getting it done at the Edinburgh Marathon. I mean, in Pauline's case, I can kind of be forgiven for missing her, although I can't also because Mike was pacing her and his past guests, Mike and Bob, I should have had my finger on the pulse there. But hopefully that makes amends. Uh, I can't promise it won't happen again, but I, I felt guilty after I, I realised that I'd missed them off. And there's so many other people I've more than likely missed off. As always, though, just get in my DMs, tell me off and I'll make amends in a follow up episode. Okie dokie, on to this week's guest and my bad audio. In a change to the normal direction, we usually head with our guests being south. We're staying firmly in the Highlands this week, which was the main reason we broke new ground for the show and committed to an in-person interview, hitting up a local Starbucks and adding a bit of atmosphere to the background. So yes, there's a lot of background noise. At one point, the blender was going mental behind the barista bar, but yeah, I think it adds a little bit of variation, a little bit of atmosphere and just something different to the episode. It might be a while before I do that again, though, or maybe find a slightly quieter location. Although it is familiar territory for myself, this week's guest is someone I hadn't had the pleasure of meeting in person until now, and it was a delight. Topic wise, it's sadly a return to the dreaded ultra marathon distance and you know my thoughts on that, but I didn't mind hearing about it, especially seeing the smile talking about it brought to this lovely lady's face. But for anyone familiar with Highland based ultra marathon runners, it'll come as no surprise to learn that this week's guest is also an Ultra X Ambassador, having recently taken part in the 110 kilometer event around Loch Ness. When she's not training hard for one ultra or another though, she is bringing the Highland running community together with a fabulous running group that I have not had my butt along to yet, but I know that Lorna Trail to Try has and it looks like a good old bunch to get involved with. But let's stop beating around the bush and hear about it all from the lady herself as we welcome the delightful, the running Fran to the show, Fran Stewart. I'm kind of, I am I am rubbish this time around. I usually have an intro. Yes. Like I normally write an intro. So you're, okay. you're one, you're going to have to listen to it to hear what it is because I haven't got anything written just now. Okay. And I would feel really odd sitting in front of these people doing a, a written intro. My next guest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Although I don't think anyone would actually hear in this. No, it's and quite, people generally don't care no, at the moment exactly. anymore. That's the problem. Um, I also haven't done too much research on well, your background, apart from looking through your, your photos to say which photos were going to be the best ones for the okay. promo. Um, so I get, I've got a rough idea of some of the events you've done. Um, but it's going to be easier if you talk about how you got into running okay. and, then, and then we'll kind of build upon your introductions to running as to why you'd want to run ultras. Out of all the events and distances you could do, why ultras? Okay. Well, <clears throat> I think I kind of got into running about 11 years ago maybe, so I was early 20s. That gives away my age too much. Um, and I think what happened was, is I think it was my late teens, you know, like you start drinking more, you're spending the money that you're earning on just like junk food, and I just like put on loads of weight. So I was like, right, it's time to do something about this. And I just, I lost a grandparent, and he ran, he done the, the Great Edinburgh run, which I don't think is a thing anymore, and it was like a 10 mile run in Edinburgh. I remember thinking like that's pretty cool that my granddad did that like it was just before he uh, passed away from cancer as well and I remember when he died it was like this moment where I was like you know fuck I've got to yeah. do something to get a bit healthier and luckily for me my little sister is like fitness 
like she's very good, like she's very disciplined, she's extremely fit. So I, I think we'd had a discussion and then she said, right, well, we'll go running together. So we picked a loop in my hometown and we just did it in stages. So we'd be, right, we're going to walk to this lamppost and we're going to run to the next one. And the goal was to run to the bottom of the hill without stopping and then we just built from there. And I think a year later I did my first 10k. Okay. So I didn't do a 5k, I jumped straight to 10k and it was a race for life because I thought that's quite nice. It went round Arthur's seat. Um, what a route for a 10k, your first event round Arthur's seat. Well luckily I lived close to Edinburgh so it was, there was loads of events on, like running was like such an accessible sport and uh, so I did my first 10k. And I liked it, you know, I was really happy, but like I didn't really know about times and stuff because I think at the time I had like a little Nike tracker for my shoe. You know the ones you put in yeah, your shoe? Yeah, I used yeah, yeah. one of those. So I think it was connected to an app. So I didn't have Strava or anything like that. Um, yeah, because the Nike app was so big yes, a few years ago. Yeah. It kind of seems to have died a death now. But So it was this little orange thing and you put it in your running shoe okay. and then it went onto your phone. So I used one of those and then I think that was 2013. And I don't remember what happened after that. Did you get back on the drink? <laughs> I just started drinking again. No. I successfully managed to like lose some weight and I just like kind of um, enjoyed my early twenties and then I think I'd obviously had the idea about running a half marathon. And I was like, right, okay, I'm gonna run a half marathon. So I signed up for the I think it was the 2015 Edinburgh half. Okay. Again, I thought that's quite a good one to do, really flat. And I think I'd spoken to a few people and they'd said it was mostly, you know, you've got the wind behind you, which is really handy. Um, so I thought, right, sign up for it, followed a training plan, and basically just ran down so near where I'm from, Pennygook, there's like an old railway line that goes all the way up to Dalkeith. Yeah, yeah. And I just did my long runs out and back, plodded along, and did my first half in 2015. And I think, like, after then I kind of, like, dabbled. I, I did 10Ks, I, here and there, I did some 5Ks, and... But it wasn't, like, it wasn't my everything in life. I think I always wanted to do a marathon, but I never signed up to one until I did the Baxters. Actually, no, that's a lie. I signed up to a few, and I just never did you them. Did okay. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I, signed up to, I signed up to quite a lot. Did you get to the start line at all, like, sit nope. in the car and just didn't turn Just didn't train enough, oh, right, you know, okay. like, didn't train enough, didn't really focus on it. I think I just wasn't sure on how to train, what to do, what to eat, how to... I think a lot of it comes down to, like, a lacking the confidence yeah. in being able to do it. Right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I guess it was becoming more apparent at that time that running was about pace. What's your minutes per mile on Strava? And I think a lot of that got to me. And like, there's only so much you can sustain, like a first pace, yeah. without blowing up. Like blowing up. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. at that stage it was just too much. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. So I think I signed up to the Edinburgh Marathon and just didn't show up. Um, <clears throat> Which at the time I think was okay because there was loads of spaces. And it <laughs> wasn't probably didn't cost a lot back then either. <laughs> wasn't taken up. And I think to me I was like, I'd rather just not do it and who cares. The sensible way of doing it, it that yeah. rather than signing up, going unprepared. And then like that actually that, that doesn't sound like a first marathon approach anyway. You turn no. up unprepared and blow up and then hate the experience and then love the medal. No, exactly. And then I think eventually when I moved up here uh, so about five years ago, that's when I really got into like my running and like found like my running community. I think before I moved here, I did kind of do like road and trail, like as a kind of hybrid thing. And I've always kind of done like the more road and trail approach. But when I moved up here, I met fellow runners, and I think I started running with more people, which yeah. kind of launched me into running a bit more. And so there was a group of us, and we decided to do the Baxters, and that was twenty twenty two. 2020? I can't remember when it was, this is so bad. I think it was 2021, it was one just after Covid I think. Okay, when it opened up again. Uh, that was 22 then? 2022. Yeah. So, so that was, that was yes, my first. yes. That was my first year as well. 2022, right, so there's a few of us and um, luckily someone I knew, she took charge of all the long runs, so it was great. We just had to show up, basically, and toddle along. So I was prepared for that one, but didn't enjoy the marathon. Didn't enjoy my first marathon, which is really controversial, but I just didn't like it. No, <laughs> I, I hated my first one, too. I, if you look back at the photos, I absolutely detested my first marathon. Mm -hmm. 
but I loved Baxter's, the second one. See, people, they were like, oh, Baxter's is beautiful, it's such a beautiful run. Nobody mentions how hilly it is yeah. when they talk about Baxter's. Because it's, it's net downhill, effectively. Well, it's net flat, but it's, mm. it's a lot of downhill, but there's a lot of uphill there is a lot as well. Of uphill. And there's also, I think, you know, when you do Edinburgh, there's so many people, yeah. like, there's so much support, and, yep. like, it's amazing. Whereas, in Baxter's, it's very like teetered out. When you right? get to Fort Whitebridge, very few people. Foyers, right. and it wasn't a, a very nice more. day. Yeah. And like, um, I think as well, like I hadn't done a lot of long distance running, so there was like, there was no like food strategy. There was no. I think I had like my porridge and then my peanut butter sandwich on the yeah. bus. Yeah. But like you usually like, you know, there was a massive gap between breakfast and the marathon, and so yeah, you know. You've got that bus ride. Yeah. Out. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, there's a piper and stuff, but that doesn't matter. Like it doesn't help with the run, <laughs> you know. And like, so I didn't see any views because they were behind you the whole way, pretty much. Or to your left. So I'm yeah. not. With, so it was good, and then I think about ten miles in, I started to feel a wee bit crampy. But I got through it, I kind of just jeffed, you know, yeah. um, and I did get to the finish line and I got the medal, but I don't know if there's maybe, I've got a bit of unfinished business with the 26.2, because it's the only marathon I've ever done. Okay. And I would like to try and have an enjoyable one, but I'm not sure, because I think... You're not tempted this year? I don't know. There's a few people I'm coming up. I'm always easily it. tempted. Yeah, there's a few people coming up, and it could be a good social atmosphere one yes. where if you're wanting to just get through it there's always going to be other people there to help you get through it but that's the problem is like with the road marathon I don't want to just get through it I want to enjoy it you, you know like when you say enjoy it enjoy it and run it or enjoy it and get a time just enjoy it and run it so my oh, ultras well, that I've done then. yeah yeah there's plenty of people that, will, that would do that yeah because my ultras, I've enjoyed them, all of them. They've been hard as hell, longer than a marathon, but I've enjoyed them and I've been smiling the whole way. But just my marathon was such a terrible experience. Like, I just... And I think I stood on a gel and it squirted all over my leg. So, you know, it was just... <laughs> and I was stuck with this woman, like, jeffing beside me. Yeah. And I know that, like, you know, you've got to run your own race, but she just kept, like, bunny hopping me the whole time and it was really yeah. distracting. So yeah. there's a part of me, I was just like, I'm just not having a good time. Um, in hindsight, I should have enjoyed it more because I think I was obsessing about my time still and I hadn't really... I was a different runner back yeah. then. You know, it would be interesting to go and do a 26.2 now with the knowledge I've got and like yeah. the experience I've got. So after then, I was like, I'm going to run an ultra next. That's the next logical step. It's only another six miles, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> just, just another. Disclaimer, it's not only another six no. miles. It's so much more. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to, I tried to run an ultra the year after, but I injured my foot um, and you know, I didn't go to a physio and I just stopped running and took a break and eventually the year after, so it's 2023 is when I did my first run <clears throat> and I thought, I'm going to do an ultra and I thought to myself, okay, I'm not going to do a 50k, I'm going to do 40, 48 miles instead. I think it was a 50 miler, but it was actually 48 miles, technically. Is that one of the muddy waves? It was the muddy coastal 50. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that I think that, that number sounds familiar, <laughs> uh, not just from your photos, but from having looked through, being tempted with ultras myself. Mm -hmm. and you look at the distance available, especially local, and you that's a very odd distance for that. I know. Well, I only found out it wasn't 50 miles a few days before. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I guess. Two miles, two miles so, less, yeah. I think it was 47 point something. Yeah. So I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to go for this one. I love the Murray Coast. Like, we spent a lot of time. Um, I'm actually originally from Turriff. Okay. So we spent a lot of time on the like the Banff coast and that kind of coast as kids. So I thought, this will be really nice. And like, my husband is from Elgin, so I know that area. So I thought, I'm just going to go for it, 50, 50 miles, who cares? And, uh, but I decided to invest in a coach. So somebody that I follow on Instagram, um, Mary Sweeney's her name, I don't know, know if you follow her yet. Yeah. So she had just done the Loch Ness 360 and she was talking about her coach. That's tough. Yeah. That is really tough. So, and she had talked about her coach, so I thought, well, actually, let's get a coach. And I did get a coach to do the Murray Coastal 50 because I needed somebody just there to help me with all this other stuff that you just don't think about when you're training for an ultra. And my coach was Meryl Cooper, and she's a GB trail athlete. So she really knows her stuff. She was really, really helpful. Like, I, I used her this year as well for the Ultra X. Um, and yeah, like, I did my first ultra, and then 
signed up to my next ultra and then signed up to the next one like it just it's just been this the bug was was there really you got yeah. by the bug and i think that because it's like you know it it is a different type of running like they talk about snacks like yeah there's snacks everywhere like your whole day is just surrounded by food like your whole run is planned around your food that's what Amy said and it's great and he says if you like eating do an ultra it's my two favourite things like yeah. running and eating like it's yeah. amazing and um, you know like <laughs> it is it's my two favourite things combined I like, eat to run and I run to eat <laughs> if I could somehow get a job that involves that as well maybe yeah, yeah. Um, but it just kind of like created this just really great space where you could, I could just run. At, no, she didn't like my coach. Never mentioned pace at all. Like you told her the goal just to finish, and that was it. Like there was no pressure to do it in a certain time. Yeah. I think you've got like I chose an ultra that had a good cut off time, um, and one that was really flat. Yeah. Which in hindsight is not always the best thing to do because you need that elevation to yeah. fix it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we had a, it was a really good day for it as well, and it was one of the best things I ever did. Like I loved it. The photo showed that it was a really warm day. Yeah. Did you not find that off then? Or because you were on the coast, you had that nice breeze. It was a nice breeze, and I don't, I don't like. I just had the best day. Like I can't fault the day at all. Like yeah. I felt good. Like you know, I felt like I could go further. I felt great the whole way through. Parts of it were hard, like you know, you've got to run like through Bucky and stuff like yeah. that. So it's difficult. Running through Bucky is always going to be hard. <laughs> no comment, but no, like going through there. There's a lot of towns towards the end, yeah. so you kind of come off the coast a bit and you're running through these towns, which did make it harder. And it finishes, you've got to like go down the steps to Cullen Beach and going down steps yeah. after. It's flats. different down a hill than going down steps. Oh, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. And then you run along the beach and then you go up the stairs. So that was probably the hardest part. But <laughs> honestly, I thought it was like, it's such a well-organised event. And then the guys that run it are really nice. And they give you a hug at the end and they're there at the end. The only issue is like, because I'm like more of a back of the pack runner, is you usually miss that yeah. party stuff at the end. Like yeah. you don't get to see the presentations. You don't get to see like the winners or anything like that. Everyone's kind of gone and you've missed all that part. But um, it was it was amazing. Like it was such an epic adventure, and I think I'd met so many people in the training for it as well. Like ultra running, I just don't think I could go back. You've done three now, is it? Technically four. Because I did my two day. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, two two ultras four. over two yes, days. So yes. I definitely count that well, as four. I would too, because you had not only did you have the two days, you also had the camping as oh, well. And that's an ultra in itself. So yeah. really, I could say three in one. Three in one. So you've had Murray, the Murray Coastal. Yes. Uh, John Muir. John Muir. So you yes. got to meet. We, we mentioned. I mentioned it to you just as we were getting set up. Uncle Lee, you yes, met Lee briefly. Yes, Uncle Lee. He was there as cheer squad. Yeah, he was. And then I met him because he knows my friend Katie, yes. who I did the run with. And then I officially met him at the end. And I was like, oh, by the way, I'm Fran, you know, and we said hello. Um, but you'll know that John Muir was just brutal. Yeah. Anyone brutal that's, that's spoken to so far that ran it said it was brutal. Yeah. That headwind. It was awful. And I think, like, I and didn't... Run, he's run on sand, sorry, as well. Yeah, run on sand. But I think I just didn't appreciate how flat it would mm. be as well like you know at some yeah. point you're I think your legs are just craving a change yeah. in elevation um, but you know I had a great race like I got a PB which I know is not the be all and end all but I did it in six and a half hours and I wasn't really expecting to do it in six yeah. and a half hours but I think like towards the end it was so windy it was so miserable so painful mm -hmm. I was just like you just can't stop like don't stop and I just yeah. pushed the last 10k was just me having an argument with myself yeah. and I was I was even like swearing at myself I was like <laughs> I was like can I swear on this you can you know, I was literally the words I was saying was like don't fucking stop bitch <laughs> just the whole like last like hour of my race yeah. because I knew if I stopped it would just be game over and like I couldn't see the finish line because you come into like Dunbar Fox Lake so yeah. there's loads of like um like rooty and juni yeah. and all this stuff so it's quite difficult to quite tightly maneuver. packed trees it looked yeah, like too. yeah and like I had fallen over as well oh, halfway no. through basically I tripped over nothing I <laughs> fell over like before halfway but it was fine um, but the last like I was not kind to myself in that last hour because I just I couldn't stop <laughs> I think on a tough one where because it's too flat and you're yeah. a highland runner now you're used to running on hills you get bored of flat. I was like that with Amsterdam. I got bored of flat. If I hadn't had 
a bridge crossing the canal, which was pretty much the only hill. They're quite steep, those bridges. Those yeah, I was just thrown in the towel. Yeah. It was just too flat. But the routes you're doing now, well, I suppose, actually, com compared to having the Baxters, which is hilly, Yes. Uh, although it is flat as well, it is very hilly, you've then done two effectively flat ultras. What drove you then to sign up for, well, as, apart from being an Ultra X ambassador, yes. what drove you to want to do the 110? Well, the Ultra X is on my doorstep, so I live just on the Great Glen Way, so I had to run past You're my right house. You were at the start, yeah. I actually ran past my house <laughs> and my dogs and husband, because were, he was walking them. So, like, I run past my house in the first kilometre, um, and so I know the route. I knew like the first section of the route really well. Yeah. And like I used that for my training runs all the time. And I always knew I was going to do the 50k. But I was like, I've done a 50k. I've done two 50ks technically. So I was like, let's do the 110 because I, I wanted to do the Loch Ness 360. But the Ultrax is essentially a Loch Ness 360 because you run around the it whole is. lock. The 360s done over three days though, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's essentially the same route. Just I thought, I'll yeah. just do the two day and camping. And I thought, I mean, nothing about camping is fun for me, but they put, they give you the tents and stuff. So I didn't have to worry about that. You just have to pack your stuff. You weren't tempted to get the B&B? Well, I was tempted to go home afterwards. <laughs> <I tried laughs> just to up, yeah, just yeah, get picked up and just leave. Cause like, it was so close, but um, no, like my friend was doing it too. Like me, my friend Katie, like we did a lot of training together and um, she was camping and it was only going to be for one night. And I was like, you know what? It's all part of the experience. And um, it was still fine, but uh, I think I just wanted something that was really massive. The John Muir was just part of my training. I'd never actually originally signed up for that. I did that as like a training, training ultra for the big ultra. Um, so, and I just wanted something with hills. And I knew the route, so I thought, let's give it a the go. The second half is pretty much the Baxters, just On slightly higher trail. up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that first 10k is just the climb out of Fort Augustus. Yeah. And I tell you, on tired legs. <laughs> After doing it the first day, yeah. <laughs> it was very And then hard. you've got to drop down and come back up for yours as well. Yeah, don't the steps, you? So it's I not as know. if they make it easy on you. I spectated um, the Happy Guy at Kaylee uh -huh. the year before. And I sat with my camera waiting for her, and a number of people thought I was a, an official photographer. <laughs> and they started running, and I had to hide the camera because I felt really bad for these people, thinking they're going to get photos out of this. No. Oops. Um, what was the atmosphere like around the campsite then? Was it was it everyone just coming in and, and pretty much going to their tent and just zonking out, or was there a bit of a par party atmosphere? There wasn't a party atmosphere, but it was really good. So I said before that, you know, like when you're at the back of the pack, you don't get to see, like, you don't see a winner. You don't see anybody. Whereas everyone was there yeah. at the campsite. So it was really great. Like, um, and there is people clapping you in um, and everyone's just sitting around eating. So it was really nice. Ultra and runners, that's all you're doing anyway. <laughs> Obviously, we're all sitting around <laughs> eating afterwards, but you get to be with the people that you wouldn't really speak to. Yeah. So that was really nice. And then the last guy that crossed, finish line everybody went and clapped him in so that was just really fun and yeah. like you don't get that at another event yeah, um, yeah I mean I think the guy that won day one did it in six hours yeah so he had already rested by the time I crossed the finish line yeah. we were like 11 and a half or 11 hours um, like the terrain was just so brutal yeah that's um, the, the, the the north side of law does look insane and I've, I've seen it done the opposite way as well because the great Glen run with yeah. Gary and it just it's not look fun to me no, well, you go up Miel Fuveli, and there's a path on one side, but there's not a path on the other side. And I didn't have poles, <laughs> so I'd never trained with poles, so I thought, yeah. it'd be fine. But, yeah. like, you know, and I gave myself, like, a stress lump on my Achilles because my feet, like, because you've got so much support in your trail shoe, yeah. my feet were just rubbed for yeah. a whole day. Because um, you promised that. You, you promised to give all the gory videos <laughs> about your feet being absolutely annihilated. By they the were. End. Like, I was limping for the last... 14 kilometers. I think I'd wanted to do it in 10. Yeah. That was my goal. But the last like 14k, and it wasn't a 60k. It was a 62k. Uh, yeah. Which matters. Um, yeah. So I basically limped myself along. My friend and I did it together, Katie, which was amazing. We'd never planned to do it together, but I think we just kind of stuck together. Um, so you're 
you know, you have to navigate down essentially peaty bogs on the other side of Mielfa Valley, and it's just like, I don't know how the winner got there so fast, like there's just no way. And then at one point we had to navigate through really quite boggy, foggy terrain, because it was quite foggy. Yeah. And uh, there was these little flags, and luckily I've got good vision, and I could see the flags, but there was a guy basically in the fog, disappeared in the fog and then at the campsite later he was like I got lost I was like I'm pretty sure we've seen you yeah. we were like you can't I mean luckily we knew the area you know we know that if you've got the lock on your left side yeah. you're all right yeah. <laughs> but, um, but the atmosphere was fantastic at the campsite like it was really nice to talk to folk you know a lot of folk that was they were doing it they had come from London so they had not trained elevation yeah at all like they're a London hill is not a hill no their 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 training runs were like laps of Regent Park so I was just like marveling at the fact that they were still there and yeah. they're still doing it and then you know a lot of people interestingly told me you know oh you'll just pass out in the campsite and like that doesn't happen like you don't pass out after an ultra is it almost like you get so tired you can't sleep yeah, and you're too worried about you know, sleeping yeah. in. Have I fueled enough? Like, yeah. have I done this? And like, I don't think you would sleep in because there's the noise of the. No, there was a piper there and... on the next day <laughs> yeah. to make sure that everybody was awake. He was walking around the campsite oh, on no. day two. Like, I was already awake, but he was doing a lap of the tent yeah. <laughs> just to make sure everyone was awake. Um, but it was a great atmosphere. I think you've got like a an aff- like it's like an affiliation with all these people that are doing yeah. the same thing. Because you were or are still an ultra ex ambassador, mm-hmm. do you get special treatment at that? No. You don't? No. You don't get special like flush tent? No, there's quite a lot of us, so I don't even, right, think, okay. they, I don't even think they would know that I was one. Like, yeah, it's to like be honest. me being a Kylo in the Wild ambassador. There's a lot of us. Yeah, no, there was no special treatment. Like, we were camping next to sheep who didn't shut up all night. It <laughs> rained, so I could hear the rain. Like it was just, and the toilets were so far away as well, like the other side of the field. Yeah. So I think I slept for a good four hours, and then got up to pee, and then that was me. I just couldn't. You know how, you, you know when you've done a long run, you're just quite painful. Like yeah. your body just aches. So yeah. It's just like that, and of course, you know, for some reason when you camp, you always try. You seem to just slide. Yeah. Like in a tent, you always go downhill. Like, yeah. So you're sliding downhill, you're lying on a route, like my camping stuff is not like good stuff. Like luckily my parents camped, so they had a good sleeping bag, but my mattress was like a centimetre thin. <laughs> and it will inevitably, no matter how good it is, will always deflate. Exactly, exactly. So it's just not comfortable and um, you know, I like five star. I'd rather stay in like a five star hotel yeah. afterwards. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, I didn't have coffee for the next day, I didn't bring a cup, you know, all these things. Yeah. Um, I think in hindsight I would do differently next time. You still smiled the whole way around though. I did. I think the photos proved that. And even coming across the line, <laughs> um, you had your individual photos. I saw that yes. you yourself and Katie. Would you do it again? I Or you've done do that you, you, you've done that one. I just don't know if I have to camp again, that's the problem. I be, just be hate it. Yeah. I hate it so much. <laughs> but there was a woman who her husband was staying in a camper van. Okay. Just next to the campsite, so she went and stayed with him. So maybe I would be a little bit smarter next time, or I would nope. just book a hotel. The only reason it kinda of came to mind is Scots on Toast did it the year before mm-hmm. and she got a B and B I think and just rocked up in the morning, refreshed, having had a shower, ready to Absolutely. go. Absolutely, like I was afraid that I don't know, I would get like disqualified. I don't know. Like I didn't yeah, want to be the person yeah, yeah. that left and came back, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I just That's a privilege of staying in the area though. Exactly. And I knew worst comes to worst I could just cry for my husband and he would come pick me up. <laughs> so you know, I mean I'm not too far away. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> What's next? Other than wanting to get revenge in a way on <laughs> marathon distance have you got another ultra kind of signed up for because you only just really got over injury off the back of that yeah experience. i know luckily my foot is okay i think yeah. it just like needed some time to recover i was icing it and some of that so luckily i'm, I'm actually fine i'm not injured thank goodness um haven't signed up to another ultra yet i was going to do the space i'd weigh 100k but to be honest, like I really just want the summer. I just want a little bit of my time back. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, enjoy the time while you yeah. can. Especially like you know, like I'm a slow runner, so you know I need to go out for four hours yeah. of a day, and 
you know, it takes out of you. Like, you know, I wish I could maybe just go out for like a two hour run and that'd be like my ultra yeah. training done. But because I'm not that kind of runner, I have to commit a lot of my time. Yeah. You know, and that's a lot of food. That's a lot of expense as well. Like, so you, you know, you're continuously buying all this ultra food as well. So it's like all of these things I just need a little bit of a mental break from. Yeah. And just to relax a little bit. Like, you know, not like, having to plan everything, plan your yes, weekends, lose your weekends. Yes, yes. And you feel like you're just doing that cycle of work, run, work, run. Yeah, and you run for two days you know because you do yeah. your back to back long yeah, runs exactly. um, so you're losing it on two days well I, I don't have that I'm a marathon runner <laughs> well <laughs> I have one long run a week, a week when yet. you eventually upgrade you'll understand when I eventually upgrade <laughs> yeah wow well, I'm actually at that point now I'm thinking there's so many ultra runners out there may as well just stay in marathon we are the one percent I'll now. be the unique one I'll be that unique person honestly like I tell people they say like you know I want to run my first marathon I'm like just do an ultra like I found that like 50 mile hunt 113 kilometers easier than my 26.2. Is that because there is less pressure? People people don't really know what an ultra is. Because yeah. you don't say it's an ultra marathon in a conversation. You go, I just did an ultra. And they're like, I have no idea what that is. I'll just nod and smile. It could be anything. And I don't know, I think just, it's just funner. Like you're, you're eating, obviously. You're taking pictures. You meet people like, you know, like, your pace doesn't doesn't matter like you yeah. can't run up a mountain like yeah. I mean some people can but not me like I think I said to somebody like after a while the distance doesn't matter like yeah you know, like you just have to be able to go you know like on that second day it was just me going yeah. for eight hours like I didn't think I was going to do it my foot hurt as soon as I put it in my shoe and I was like well because you it? knew the area as well though as soon as you get to a certain point you're like I'm, I'm this far I may as well yeah. Yeah, you just it's like, well, just get to the, the next che the checkpoint. Just yeah. get to the next checkpoint. And then, you know, me and my friend didn't start together on day two. So we bumped into each other at 30k. Okay. And that was great. So we did the last 20k together, which was lovely. Um, but the whole of the second day, I was just like, just keep moving, just keep going. I made like a pledge to just try and run all the flats and runnable sections. And yeah. then I just walked all the hills and it was fine. Like... It wasn't fine. It was hard, oh, yeah. and you know, I we have to walk up the steps at Falls of Foyers, and yeah, I thought so I was good. going to cry because yeah. there's all these people. I see the number of people I subjected to running those steps. They were they, they weren't English speakers either, so I felt really really guilty. They were like Dutch guys, French guys, German, and then people. A lot of people come a long way to do that yeah, event. Yeah, yeah, they do. And it's, I suppose in a way you'll see them a lot more with with being an ambassador. They've got Tanzania. They've got mm, yes. That, all these other different events around the world. We're no different having Ultra X Scotland to these other countries. I know, it's amazing. And it's just like this, I mean, there was no views really on the first day because it was really foggy, but the views are just fantastic. Like that second day, like just taking the time to actually enjoy the views that I don't think you get with Baxter's. Like, no, you won't. You yeah, because you're stuck in the trees on that <laughs> yeah. side of the road. Because we were kind of like in a little bit on the trail and it's just stunning. Like it was beautiful. And you're um, that bit further up as well. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, coming up those steps at Falls of Fires, like there's all these tourists and they're like, yeah, go on, Francis. And you're like, oh, you don't know that I did the 60k yesterday. Like you have to tell you this because yeah. you're just trying to get up the stairs without dying. You can't do the Baxter's then this year because you need to enjoy your summer. Exactly. And that well, would I... mean you'd have to train now. I don't know. I think I'm going to do the 10k. Okay. Because it keeps me going. Yeah. And I know that it's not too much pressure. And I've heard it's all downhill. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's effectively all downhill. Yeah. And you'll have the company of Lee. He's oh, running he the 10k. The 10K. He, well, there you go. He's done the marathon. He's done the 5k. He just needs the silverware. 10K. The 10k. Okay. So he wants the trio. So at least you'd have company there as well. And you're, you're local. You, you've got your run club. And we're going to get mm -hmm. onto that in a second. So you'll know other people doing it. Yes, I think there might be a few of us. My sister's going to do it. Her friend's going to do it. I tried to get my husband to do it, but he's not going to do it. He's not bothered about races or medals, which... He, well, <laughs> if, he's a five, if, he's, if he's a 5K runner, then he might enjoy the 10K because it's very fast. It's a very fast course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, That's well, my PB course. The well, week people before say Madison. that, yeah. Yeah, when you're not meant to be PBing. Because it's the same day, I think, isn't it? The marathon is, yeah. I had um, I had Amsterdam the following week. Right, okay, okay. So, Baxter's is a week before, because I wanted to do it last year. Mm -hmm. And end up doing the 10K. And I was breaking in my marathon shoes that weekend. And I got, like, a 40, I think it was a 43, mm -hmm. 42 or 43 10K. 
Yeah, I've heard it's quite it's like a, a fast quick, one. Yeah, and I would like to get a little PB. You know, like I know that I talk about like slow running and it's fine, but there's also nothing wrong with me wanting to go for a PB no, exactly. if I want to. And yeah. I think it just I want to do something different over the summer. Yeah, a bit more high intensity, like you know. Yeah. Le- Less of the eating as well, because like, it is a lot. Like I'm trying not to just eat constantly. Just eat for the sake of eating. Like, but you do a lot of um, gym work as well. Yeah, I do. I train at a place called the Studio, which is like a group PT place, yeah. and it's great. I've, I've, uh, I used to go there before COVID, and because it's group PT, I don't have to think about anything. Like you just show up, and I really want to get into the strength training a bit more over the summer, because like the last like six months, it's just been too difficult. Like you're too exhausted. Yeah. To, to lift you don't anything have time heavy. To do it. No, yeah. and like I was only going once a week, whereas now I want to. Prioritise like not less running because I do still want to run like go up the hills and things, but just something different, something very different. I think that then takes us to the Run Club, which it has made a reappearance now, hasn't yes, it? Now that yeah. I've had some rest, yeah, uh, yeah. we are back on Sunday. Back on Sunday, yes. I'll be the first one. First one back since the ultra. Okay, so I might I might make an appearance myself. Oh, it'll be good to have the you. idea of coming back to Inverness for the weekend after working here all week though that's that's my biggest one to kind but of we're not fast runners we're not PBers <laughs> you know we're tr- ultra trail runners so <laughs> have you got a uh, uh, route set up for it already yeah we usually just do like Craig Deneen yeah so it's like, up near yeah. your neck of the woods yes and then um, I think I usually just make it up on the day, but I think we're doing like four miles, something quite easy because uh, I don't know who's coming basically at all and I'd like to just do something a little bit shorter. I've got friends staying on the Saturday night, so it's kind of like a, you know, I'll come and do run club for a couple of uh, miles, but yeah, it'll be really good. We usually go up uh, up a hill, yeah. along a bit and down a hill, you know, but Ultra we usually style. walk, walk the hills, style. which is quite good. <laughs> what, uh, what encouraged you to start the run club? Do you know, I think... So one of the things I really like about the running community on Instagram is like it's like just like having like a whole load of like cheerleaders that you just never get to meet though. Like and I think I wanted to try and bring some of that into my running. Selfishly I really wanted to have a better reason to do back to back long runs. Because on the Sunday, once you've done like I don't know, four hours in the hills on a Saturday, you don't want to get up and go running on a Sunday. You needed a reason to get up. Having a run club made it so much easier. Like, having all these people around just made it so much easier for me to get up and do these slightly longer runs on a Sunday. So selfishly, from that point of view, um, and just, I think, I just wanted to meet more people that were running, and I didn't want to join a run club that was road-based. Yeah. Or, like, a lot of the road-based runners, and this is no disrespect to them, like, all these run clubs, they talk about pace. They talk about, like, let's get a good time today. Like, let's do this. Let's have this group. Let's have a fast group or a slow group. Was I just wanted a group of people that could run long distance, so we're yeah. not short distance. Like I like to um, reinforce this. Like we don't, we're not like a beginners club. Yeah. Just long distance running that is just easy pace. Like it's more about the chat and the photos rather yeah. than like, the pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there wasn't really that kind of club in Inverness. Like I go to the Highland Hill Runners, but that's all quite intense, like yeah. hill training. Um, so yeah, then came the Inverness Trail Running Club and it's kind of just like grown a little bit since then. It's not a massive club, which is nice. It's nice you to know. see a variety of faces as well, though. Yeah, you don't get very many men, but you do no, have some. Yeah, a lot of people ask me if it's for women only, and I've never said it is, but it just we don't get a lot of women. But we do get some men, and it's really good that we do. Yeah. You know, but we are very heavily feminine. I find that with a lot of, especially local groups, yeah. Jog Scotland's, in, in and around the area, it is predominantly women, and I think because people see that it's other women, they're like, oh, it can't be for men. Yeah, it's a safe space for women, but yeah. it's just, we just happen to, like, I just happen to know a lot more women up here than I do men, to be honest, so yeah. Yeah. that's how it started. But we do, like, we have a couple of men that come, and it's great to see them. Maybe another one, eventually. <laughs> I know, maybe we could talk you into doing ultra though, because oh, I'm just no, trying to tell see, everyone nah, to do an ultra. Then I'm never going to come along. Then I'm it's never. really just a space for me to yeah. force my ultra opinions on people. Yeah, but that's, that's where I maybe need to go to someone like the Harriers or. Yeah. Um, I don't know who's my next nearest one after the Harriers. It's probably one of the Norse clubs that are tar based. Because I am, although I run fire ish, uh, and I run in and around that area, and we've got the Edmonton Hill Race coming up it's okay, a 12k yeah. and I probably will do it it's not where my enjoyment is 
isn't where my like enjoyment that's sacrilege. is. <laughs> Even though you, you saw the route that I did with Ian and uh, Lorna. Yeah, getting the segments, yes. Yeah, getting the segments. So I'm going to go back out there and do that. Maybe actually wearing trail shoes and not elf ones. Uh, but it is something that watching how the groups kind of come together and it's grown, especially over the winter. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm a little bit self-conscious that maybe over the summer it'll be a bit smaller, um, and but that's fine, like, it is what it is, and I'm just going to accept that, like, it's not a paid group, it's just my hobby, so we're yeah. trying not to take it too personally, um, but I think over the winter, and I think while, while the Inverness half was on, a lot of people came as their, like, yeah. long run, which was quite nice, so I'm hoping that over the winter as well it grows a little bit. And again. even on the run up to Baxter's, it might grow yeah. because we've got... I see those those sorts of people might want to do the 10k, they might be doing the 5k, yeah. or they might want, actually want to do the sexy person club marathons. Um, <laughs> otherwise, what else have you kind of got in mind? Have you got like any big dreams that you want to do? Are there any big events in the world that you want to achieve? I think a big dream for me would be the Cape Wrath. Okay. Or any of the UTMB ones. Yeah, like, UTMB is. Um, that was totally new to me this year. What UTMB yes, even yes, was? Oh my god! Like, but I think Cape Wrath would be like maybe up there as a bucket list event. But again, it's a lot of camping. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, and like, I'm a hay fever sufferer. So like, I'm allergic to nature basically. Like, I'm <laughs> I'm a very outdoors and you're person. A trail runner. I'm a very outdoorsy person until it comes to nighttime, and then I'm an indoorsy person. Yeah. <laughs> I like my luxuries. Um, you know, like, so I think if I can try and embrace that other side a bit more, um, then maybe Cape Brass one day. But I see that still as, like, a really elite thing to do. Yeah. But again, I'm kind of like, you know, the type of ultra runner I am, I'm just like, I'll just sign up for it, it'll be fine. As long as the cut-off times are okay, that's yeah. all that matters to me. Like, yeah, exactly. is the cut-off time generous enough for me? Yeah. That's all I look at nowadays. Like, it's not really a whether you can or can't do something, I think. Yeah, and that's what Mike Houston had said on his episode and, and, and previous, like, previously uh, and, and kind of since. It's about finding an ultra that has a generous cut-off time yeah. so you can enjoy the day. If you want to go and run it to try get a, a fast time, that's fine. Um, More power to you if you want to do that. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can run hills, but at the same time, it's okay to walk them. And it's essential for some people. Like, I don't know how... Like, again, the guy that won the Ultra X day one, six hours yeah. to do 62 kilometers. Like, it wasn't the same guy that won and set a record on the Glasgow to Edinburgh, was he? Oh, I don't know. But he won <laughs> the whole insane. event yeah. overall. I think he did it in 10 hours overall. And That's I was crazy. in, like, 20 hours. And yeah. it's like, we're just different people. And I'm like, where's your reel? Where's your fi pictures? Like, uh, yeah. You know, where... <laughs> but that would be, like, me looking at Ryan Miller or, or looking at AB and going... They're three out of the sub three hour runners, and I'm a kind of three forty five runner. That's that's a lot of time in between what we are. Uh, it's not that it's not pop. It's not impossible for me. So those are like Boston qualifying times, are they? Or for them, for them, yes. Yeah, see, I'm just I'm so far removed. I from think those. for me, a Boston qualifier is like you'd have to be sub three really to get entertainment. Oh yeah. It's it's like the three hour mark ish. Oh my god! It's, it's it's around about that area, and even the good parades for most of the other marathons is around about that sort of time for a man of my age, uh, and they're they're not much older. I, th I think AB might be actually younger. I'm not sure, uh, but Ryan's in his forties, so his time is coming down what he would require. Um, he got a sub three, and he's just just lower than the cut off, mm -hmm. so he's not sure he would get a BQ because you still have to go into a pool and get accepted. See, why would you want to go through all that? Like, <laughs> but That's the same as getting the stones for the UTMB, isn't it? I guess, yeah. And I think you do maybe get some for doing Ultra X, I'm not sure. I quite fancy looking at Snowdonia next year right, as okay. well, but I've heard there's just loads of people there as yeah. well. Like, but is the, have they not just introduced the 25 there as well? Yeah, they have. Um, so something like that with like high elevation. I'm just looking for elevation yeah. and fun more. Yeah, because I was going to ask if, you, if you'd if fancy doing like the Devil of the Highlands because it's variable. Yes. Or if you do the Dava, it's like really flat from what I was seeing from Ryan. Yeah, and I've got my eye on Dava. Um, I was going to do it last year, but I unfortunately injured again. So um, I think 
maybe, but I just I'm not sure about another flat yeah. flat yeah. race. But I have heard really good things about the Dava, and it's the Murray Way Ultras, and they're really yeah. good. Yeah, and there's a, a trio of them as well, so it would be quite nice to get the trio. There's four. There's a four. Yeah, now. so they've got the Space Side Way 100. Right. K, yes. Yeah. Which I was going to do this year, but you know, maybe maybe next year, maybe the year after. I don't know. Like I think 100 miler. Do them all. I don't know. <laughs> Can we convince them to do a special? Maybe. <laughs> I think 100 miler or 100k would still be like a good goal as well. But yeah. I'm just not sure. Like I think I'm, I'm really bad for just like signing up, signing up. Whereas I'm trying to just just go to the mic. Yeah, just like keep myself back. Be and again, like you know, you hear the phrase like a running widower. Like I need yeah. to be a wife as well. <laughs> like yeah. spend some time with my family and my dogs. And <laughs> it's kind of the flip side. Cause I Although I've had a, had a few female guests on, and they are typically ultra runners, actually, funnily enough, the, it's predominantly men leaving their wives at yeah, home with yeah. the kids and the dogs. <laughs> so it's nice to hear from the opposite side. It's also nice to have... You have goals in mind, but at the same time, there's nothing immediately on your kind of periphery. It's just enjoying the summer and then see what comes. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll just change my mind. Like, the amount of times I've said, I'm going to do the 100K. No, yeah. I'm not going to do the 100K. Like, that's been the conversation I've been having in my head for, like, the last six months. Yeah. And I think I could have done it, like, and I think it would have been no problem, but I think the thought of having to stick to a training plan for another couple of months while well, it's summer and everyone's going out and everyone's yeah. doing this, I was just, like, I really was moved to commit the time again yeah 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 and i needed to buy new trail shoes because i had to get cut out of mine well that's a shame you never won the competition <laughs> yeah. by this point it's all by this political. point but they'll know who's won it um and you 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 chose them you pressed the button it wasn't me i know i didn't want the entry fee i didn't want the entry though yeah you didn't want the entry and like maybe trying like a backyard or something like that would be quite good because i've never done that well that's effectively what the 24 is kind of okay it's in your backyard and it's running laps. <laughs> yeah, so maybe one of those one day. I don't know. Yeah, like, I well, suppose, and there is options available to, to us. Uh, we've got Golsby now, Backyard Ultra. Yeah. It's a lovely, lovely spot for that to be in. Um, you have got the 24, even though that doesn't really excite you that much, that idea of it. Maybe one day. Yeah. Maybe take the running group there and just see what you think about the route. I know, I think as well, because like, once I stop, I like to stop. You yeah. know, like, I, I don't know, it well, would we, be a we different game. We had people game. do that. Yeah. We, we had Rachel uh, McPherson did that. She, once, she didn't stop at all until she stopped. Wow. Um, and she did phenomenally well, because that was her first real... How many laps? Like, oh, she did over ultra distance. I can't remember the number of laps, but she did over ultra distance. Is she, and she she had she was in that sort of situation where she had to go to extreme measures while running round. She just didn't stop. And Mike Houston was the same. He didn't really stop. He came in for pit stops for like two or three minutes. Yeah. Got food shoved in his face and went back out again. Not like the rest of us who were stopping for like 20, 30 minutes, maybe a bit longer, and then going back out. And that is tough. Doing that is it tough. Must be. Well. Um, yeah. I would highly recommend it, and since you have the ability to go and scout it out. Yeah, and I think like that's one of the good things about living in the Highlands is there's yeah. so much running up here. There's so many races around. Like it's just getting to them. Getting to them, like you've yeah. got to drive. You yeah, you've to got drive. to drive. Um, but and and it's, it's it's not like we're complaining about driving. It's just because everything seems, even though it's but as the crow flies, it's so close. It's like two, three hours driving sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. But it's I think it's such a fantastic place to run. And like the views are great. You can find yeah. a hill. Like we've got Ben Wivis on our doorstep as well. Like for anyone who wants to try running up a Monroe. Like Yeah. Another thing I would recommend. <laughs> yeah, I've not run up Monroe, so I can't say. You mean <laughs> I've not you walked to Monroe you either. Up and you run down. <laughs> well, I mean I could I could run up Ben Wivis, so that's a possible that's a possibility. Okay. Oh well. Um, before we finish off then, if anyone doesn't follow you, where can they follow you? And also the running club as well. So, I am... <laughs> You've changed your handle because I kept friend. seeing your, all, your other one. So the running fran underscore is yeah. my running page. And then the run club is the run club inv underscore. 
<laughs> I just never remember these things. No, no, I remember mine because all my accounts pretty much have the same names. Mr. Steve. <laughs> Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve. But no, please follow. That would be amazing. Yeah, and that's uh, hopefully the majority of people do because I say it's, it's it's nice to have everyday runners, although you're an everyday ultra runner. Yeah. Which is a slightly different guest than what we've had on in the past. Even though we've had ultra runners on, they've always been of variable mentalities that either right at the beginning of their ultra running, like they haven't maybe run one at all yet and they're just coming up to their event or they're really seasoned to the point of yeah. they're haggard um, and worn <laughs> well, down by it and they're, they are really pushing for achievement more than anything times because they're like always thinking about the last one they did. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have, you're in that middle ground of you've done the tough ones, the flat ones, you've done the hilly ones and you're looking, you're still bright eyed, smiling about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it like, I just don't think I can go back though. Like I just love some, I just <laughs> well, love You have to get revenge on, yeah, the, on the marathon I need, first. Yeah, I need to do it, but I could do a trail marathon. You could. Just for good, good mixture. It's of... not quite the same. And you said as well, the, the Baxters is hilly, so at least you get yes. that variation. Yeah, I've Just got go unfinished back. business with Baxters, I think, so maybe one day. Yeah. But I'm not, I don't know, I can't make any promises. But I'm doing the 10K, so I'll be there. Speak to Lee, because we want to get him sub five. So if you speak to Lee about the following year okay. and sign up. I would like to get a sub five as well. That's so a, that's we a plan. Maybe, I will pace you both to sub five. Maybe me and Lee get a sub five. Yes. Okay, okay. There we go. That's a way to end. Maybe what, 2025? 2020. Sub five for 2025. There you go. There, go. there you go. I think that, that could be a that could that's be our on the WhatsApp card. group right there. Yes. Well thank you very much for joining me today. Hopefully that sounds okay now as well. I hope so. The blender did go on halfway through there, so oh, hopefully it all sounds good. Oh, well thank I you very so. much and um, yeah, we'll watch how you get on and what you decide to sign up for next. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's just embarrassing, isn't it? I loved how flawless Fran was throughout that chat with perfect mic placement and a slick chat all around. Whereas Amateur Hour here, myself, yeah, less said about me, the better. My bassy, ill-placed microphone aside, it was undeniable how much Fran loves ultra distance and of course eating for that matter as well. Even though it was a first time meeting Fran in person, hopefully it won't be the last. As I said before the interview rolled, I'm going to hopefully get my butt along to one of her fantastic community runs some point soon, time permitting when work slows down a little bit and we go, go back to some form of normality. Thank you though to Fran once again for braving a coffee with me and putting up with my banter and having a good old chat at the same time. But also a massive thank you to everyone for downloading and streaming the podcast today. It is always going to be the best way you can support the show. If you feel so obliged as to share us in your stories on Instagram or Facebook, I'm never going to turn my nose up at that either. I do really appreciate those. They take a second to do, but they make such a big difference to the show and to my what do we call it? The uh, endorphin levels. Running gives you one boost, but when you see people shouting out the show or shouting out the guests that we've had on, it just gives you that little bit of a Friday feeling kick up the butt and just puts a smile on the face. If you'd like to show your physical support for the podcast, we do have a merchandise partner over at Twisted Running. I keep saying I'm going to expand our range from more than just one t-shirt. I just haven't decided on what I want the design to be. The guys are really fantastic though. They've put some offers out there of different things we can do. At the same time though, I don't want the price to go up too high and put anyone off wanting to buy one of them as well. So when we get round to it or when I get round to it, I will get more options up there. But the t-shirt's there. It's great quality. It lasts and lasts. I've had mine for ages now. I've washed them numerous times. They've not faded. They've not bobbled. They are still as they were on day one arrival. So I can't say anything bad about that. They are fantastic quality. 
If you haven't already though, hop on over to Twisted Running, drop them a follow on social media. They run regular competitions, they show appreciation to the community, uh, to their ambassadors. And yeah, they're just a fantastic little family run business that are doing great things for not just us, but the whole wide community, uh, other podcasts, run groups, etc. You can find a link on their Instagram page to the website or via our own website straight to the the 99s page where you can buy the t-shirt of course our website is the point 99 podcast.com and that's the 99 numerals in between the point 99 podcast the show is available on all your major podcast platforms of choice i've said it the past few episodes but just in case anyone does wonder where google podcast has gone that whole platform has disappeared it's not just us it's just a platform it no longer exists but you can now find us on YouTube podcasts instead, which I think is just a little bit of a rebrand of the Google Podcasts platform. We also have an inbuilt player on our website, which I've just mentioned the link to where you can find every episode playable there. And also we have conversions onto YouTube with audio visuals in the background. It's automatically done. Hopefully one day we might have some videos ourselves. I just don't have the time to produce them, but... Well, we can always look down the pipeline and hope for the best. Finally, we are on Instagram and Facebook. I'm still not using Facebook that much. And even Instagram, apart from the competition this week, I've been a little bit lax on actually getting stuff out. Work has just been that busy. I touched on it last week. I work for local government to do with politics. So with the UK election really ramping up now and a few other things on the go a few other contests it's really difficult to actually have the time to do everything but it's my choice i'm getting it done and hopefully you guys are loving it at the same time if you want to get in contact you can contact me at the instagram page the point 99 podcast or also via my own page mr underscore steve underscore runs you can drop us an email as well at the point 99 podcast at gmail.com. Drop a comment on any of the posts and I will also drop you a message. If for every reason you can't make contact with me, I will go and make contact with you whatever way is best for yourself. As I have already done, I can't thank you enough for tuning in today. If you've made it this far, you are a super awesome human being big hearts to you guys. I do really appreciate you all. Until the next episode, one that will once again take us international. Stay safe, enjoy your runs, and you will hear from me soon.